we would like to welcome here on the dais for his deliberation, Revered Swami Japa Siddhananda Ji Maharaj, Head, Department of Sanskrit and Philosophy, Ramakrishna Mission Vivekananda Educational and Research Institute, RKM Veri Belurmat, on his topic, Contribution of Ramakrishna Mission towards Sanskrit Education. But before that, I'd like to request all the students present here to please eat your tiffin quietly so that a revered Maharaj might not feel disturbed while giving his lecture. Maharaj, please. Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om Yathagnir Dahika Shakti Ramakrishni Sthitahiya Sarva Vidya Swarupantam Saradam Pranamam Yaham Om Namo Bhagavate Ramakrishnaya <coughs> My respectful pranams to Revered Swami Jayantanandaji Maharaj Secretary Ramakrishna Mission Vidyapit Devghar and also to all other senior monks present here, my respectful pranams to them. My love, best wishes and namaskars to dear Swami Divya Sudhananda Ji Maharaj, Principal Ramakrishna Mission Vidyapit Devghar, dear Swami Vedarthananda Maharaj, Acharya Provisional Training Centre, Belurmat, and other brother monks and brahmacharis. <coughs> My respectful regards to all other teachers of this esteemed institution and other seniors who have assembled here, scholars. My love and best wishes to dear students. <coughs> आदौ संस्कृतेन किंचित उक्तवा आंग्ल भाषया उपस्थापनम करिष्यामि संस्कृतम सर्वेन पठितव्यम सर्वोपि जनह संस्कृतम पठेत रूपांतरेन स्वयं देवाह एव भुवि विचरन्ति येशाम मुखे वाणी व्याकरण समस्कृता स्यात इति हरदत्तह इति कस्चन वयाकरण हा विद्वान वदति सहश्लोक रूपेन उक्तमान अहम तस्य तात्परियम अवोचम किमर्थम समस्कृतम पठनीयम शरीरम मनः बुद्धि ही इति सर्वे इमे पदार्था हा पवित्रा हा भवन्ति शुद्धा हा भवन्ति अपिचा जीवनस्य परमम लक्ष्यम यदस्ति तस्य प्राप्तों संस्कृता अध्ययनम सहायकारी भवति उपयोगी भवति अधुना काले विज्ञानी ना हा अपि विश्वसन्ति यत् संस्कृत शब्दानाम उच्चारणे ना शरीरे मस्तिष्के ये तरंगा हा उत्पद्यन्ते ते एकाग्रताया हा संपादने उपयोगी ना हा सहकुर्वंति इति विज्ञानी ना हा अपि स्थूल दृष्टया हा यद्यपि विज्ञानम् अति सूक्ष्मां दृष्टिम् अपेक्षते तथापि लोकगतम् सर्वम् अपि विज्ञानम् स्थूलमेव अतः इमे स्थूल दृष्टया हा विज्ञानी ना हा अपि जानन्ति यत् संस्कृतम् 
योगे सहकारी भवति एकाग्रता संपादने उपकरोति इति अतः वयम् सर्वे प्रयत्नेन संस्कृतम् पठिष्यामः With this much, let me begin the presentation. First, first slide should come, then only I can, yes. <coughs> now, the topic given for deliberation is contribution of Ramakrishna mission towards Sanskrit education. Here we have three important words. Ramakrishna mission, Sanskrit and contribution. What is Ramakrishna mission? Just in a few seconds we will see. <coughs> Ramakrishna mission is a unique organization in which monks and lay members cooperate in providing educational, medical and other forms of service to the society, especially to the poor and the disadvantaged. Ramakrishna Mission was founded by Swami Vivekananda on 1st May 1897 to serve the humanity. It was later registered as a society on 4th May 1909. What are the ideals of Ramakrishna Mission? Swami Vivekananda presented before monks the ideal of Atmano Mokshartham Jagadhitayacha for one's own liberation and for the welfare of the world. This forms the source of inspiration and sustenance for all activities of the Ramakrishna mission. And especially to the Indians, he gave renunciation and service. Swamiji said, the national ideals of India are renunciation and service, intensify her in those channels and the rest will take care of itself. This becomes a subset of the Atmano Mokshartham Jagadhitayacha. It becomes subsumed into that vast ideal. Now, what is Sanskrit? Our students should be able to say, my dear students of Ramakrishna Mission Vidyapit Devghar, what is Sanskrit? When you utter the word Samskritam, what do you understand? At least, I will tell one more word. Prakrita. Everyone knows. Prakriti. Everyone knows. Prakriti. Vikrita. Everyone knows that. That which has been modified, that becomes Vikrita. Prakrita. Vikrita. In the same way, we have Samskrita. Samskrita means that which is that which is made perfect, that which is made flawless, that which is embellished, that is Samskritam. It is said Samyak Kritam Samskritam. Samyak means that which is made excellent, eminent or good in quality. Well, then what is this language? About this language, a poet by name Dandi, he says, it is divine tongue, it is a divine language. Samskritan nama daivi vak anvakhyata maharshi bhihi. What does it mean? It means Sanskrit is that language which is promulgated or which is spread among the masses by rishis. It is spread, why do they say? Anvakhyata is the word used. It means 
following the vedic sentences the classical language has taken its birth that is what it simply means our swami vedarthananda mentioned this bhashasu mukhya madhura ramya girvana bharati these are all the sayings or adages that we listen about sanskrit <coughs> so we get to know what sanskrit is what is the greatness of this language our students will be thinking we have so many subjects to study in the school and these sadhus sanyasis have come here to say you study sanskrit also it is an added load on us so let us see what the great men say about this swami vivekananda said about sanskrit it is the only perfect vehicle of religious thought perfect vehicle of religious thought what does it mean the perfect vehicle of fun what is the perfect vehicle maybe a caricature or one word at comment that will convey what you cannot do in sentences in the same way swami ji said if you want to convey religion sanskrit comes in as the perfect vehicle a medium that is why our rishis who could attain the highest stages in concentration which we call as samadhi they gave out they gave out what they experienced there in mellifluous sanskrit that is why swami ji said the only perfect vehicle of religious thought swami ji also said the very sound of sanskrit words gives a prestige and a power and a strength to the race shri arabindo maharshi arabindo he says sanskrit language as has been universally recognized by those competent to form judgment is one of the most magnificent the most perfect the most prominent and wonderfully sufficient literary instrument developed by the human mind <clears throat> we have sir william jones speaking eloquently about the greatness of sanskrit who is sir william jones sir william jones is a british philologist and an orientalist you are, you might be knowing students he founded the asiatic society in calcutta in the year 1784 and today asiatic society is the is one of the heritage institutions in india he said the sanskrit language whatever be its antiquity is of a wonderful structure more perfect than greek more copious than the latin and more exquisitely refined than either yet bearing to both of them a stronger affinity both in roots of verbs and in the forms of grammar than could possibly have been produced by accident then we have another great man talking on the greatness of sanskrit frederick schlegel frederick schlegel was a german poet literary critic philosopher philologist and indologist he says there is no language in the world even greek which has the clarity and the philosophical precision of sanskrit india is not only at the origin of everything she is superior in everything intellectually religiously or politically and even the greek heritage seems pale in comparison
then let us see what is the relation between Sanskrit and India. We should say they are synonymous. We can't think of one without thinking of the other. That is why the wise men say Bharatasya Pratishthe Dve Samskritam Samskritis Tatha The very base, the fundamentals of Bharata are two. One is Sanskrit, the another is the culture, Samskriti. Vihaya Samskritam Nasti Samskritis Samskritashrita if you give up this Sanskrit, then the culture that is based on that will also become non-existent. So that is the relation we have between Sanskrit and India. Because in by India we always mean the sublime culture. And the culture is non-different from the Sanskrit language. <coughs> San, Swamiji said, Sanskrit and prestige go together in India. As long as our scholars, thinkers and educationists remain ignorant of Sanskrit, our entire culture, literature and life will remain incomplete, said Dr. Rajendra Prasad, the first president of India. Mahatma Gandhi who is revered as the father of our nation, he said, without the study of Sanskrit, one cannot become a true Indian and a true learned man. Swamiji said, the eyes of the whole world are now turned towards this land of India for spiritual food and India has to provide it for all the races. Here alone, is the best ideal for mankind and western scholars are now striving to understand this ideal which is enshrined in our Sanskrit literature and philosophy and which has been the characteristic of India all through the ages. <coughs> Swamiji had a mission. He gave a vision to us. What is to be done? Swamiji said, my idea is first of all to bring out the gems of spirituality that are stored up in our books. Let them be the common property of all. The great difficulty in the way is the Sanskrit language, the glorious language of ours. The whole of our nation no. <clears throat> And this glorious language has become a difficulty in dissemination of the gems of spirituality and that's why Swamiji said and this difficulty cannot be removed until if it is possible the whole of our nation are good Sanskrit scholars. Therefore the ideas must be taught in the language of the people at the same time Sanskrit education must go on along with it. Now let us come to the contribution part. When we speak of the contribution of Ramakrishna mission towards Sanskrit education, the listeners, the people may ask, what are the premium institutions we, you have in Sanskrit? They may question like that. We have tens of Sanskrit universities in India run by state government and central government. Sanskrit universities, not Sanskrit departments. We have several universities exclusively meant for Sanskrit studies. And we have hundreds of colleges, thousands rather, thousands of colleges which offer Sanskrit programs at the undergraduate level and at the postgraduate level also. Now the question will be, what is the contribution of Ramakrishna mission? Even if we take 
all the institutions run by Ramakrishna Mission which host Sanskrit as a subject, it could be counted on fingers. So obviously, the people are inclined to ask, what contribution have you made? So, let us only think about the unique contribution. Of course, we also offer undergraduate programs, certificate courses, master's degree and also doctoral degrees in Sanskrit. We have several institutions in Ramakrishna Mission which offer these. But that is done by other universities and institutions also. So let's not spend time on that, making a list of what are the Ramakrishna Mission institutions offering Sanskrit programs. Let us see what is the unique contribution. First, a beacon in the din and bustle of Indology. Indology means the study of Indian knowledge systems by probably and not invariably non-Indians. That has some benefit also. The greatest benefit of Indology is it put the spotlight back on India. Whatever the motives behind, they for sure put back the spotlight on India and Indian knowledge systems. That is a great benefit. But it created enormous confusion also. In this scenario, what is the contribution of Ramakrishna mission? Let me cite the words of Swamiji in this regard. You all know, my dear students, how many Vedas are there? Can anyone say? What are they? Very good. Very good. Very good. Bas. So you all know Rig Veda. In Rig Veda, there is a hymn which describes the creation. Creation, how this entire universe was created. And that hymn is known as Nasadiya Supta. There we have one mantra. Namrityura asi damrutanatar hinaratriya anha asit praketaha ani e davatam svadhayata de kantasma ad dhanyana parakinchanasa. You have a phrase. Anidavatam Anit Literally means it breathed. Avatam means without air, without breath. This is what the literal meaning, the word just simply at the first instance, this is the meaning that comes to the mind. The Indologists you, the, those who are seniors here know there was a series of books published sacred books of the east a very great philosopher a lang a, um, Indologist was the chief editor series of books came out and there they all translated the Rig Vedic hymns and this mantra and this phrase Anid Avatam was translated as he breathed without breath which appears to be stupid and they committed that mistake. Swamiji pointed to this and said in translating the suktas Swamiji said in translating the suktas pay particular attention to the Bhashyakara's commentators and pay no attention whatever to the orientalists. They do not understand a single thing about our Shastras, scriptures. It is not given to drive philologists to understand philosophy or religion. 
For instance, the word Anid Avatam in the Rig Veda was translated, he lived without breathing. Now, here the reference is really to the chief prana and avatam has the root meaning for unmoved. Swamiji points this out, that it is not in the Bhashya. Sayana Bhashya doesn't mention this because it is obvious for any Sanskrit student, it is very obvious. What does Swamiji say? The root meaning for unmoved. Avata contains the verb va. Va gati gandhana yoho iti dhatuhu. Prathamartha gati hi. So avata unmoved. Swamiji points to that. That is the traditional way of looking at our scriptures. <coughs> that is without vibration. Swamiji said. Now here the reference is really to the chief prana and avatam has the root meaning for unmoved. That is without vibration. It describes the state in which the universal cosmic energy or prana remains before the kalpa cycle of creation begins. Swamiji that is why admonished explain according to our sages and not according to the so-called Europeans. Swamiji admonished explain according to our sages and not according to the so-called European scholars. What do they know? This contribution no one else ever dared to do in those days. Nowadays people are jump around and say I did this, I did this original contribution, whatever it is. Swamiji was the first person who went to Britain during the British rule and chastised them left and right. He pointed out to this. Never follow those people. You follow your Bhashyakaras and you have not done that. It is a mistake, a blunder. This bringing back us to our senses, we had taken leave of our senses. Putting us back to the sensible state is a unique contribution of Ramakrishna mission. What is the other unique contribution? <clears throat> Motivation for acquisition of experiential knowledge. I can speak a little more. What is the time limit I have? Another unique contribution is motivation for acquisition of experiential knowledge. What do you mean by this? We study scriptures, we read Sanskrit stotras and some other parts of different scriptures, but do not practice them. This has been a bane, a disease with the human mind, uh, in the Indian mind. Swamiji pointed out this also in one of his lectures at, in Madras. In the series of lectures from Colombo to Almora, there are five invigorating, elevating lectures delivered in Madras, now Chennai. In one of them, Swamiji points it out. Swamiji says, we speak parrot-like many things, but do not do anything, do not perform anything. What is the reason for that? Swamiji himself puts the question and gives the answer also. Now today we are also eager, curious to know why we make like that. Swamiji said, we speak many things parrot-like, but do not do them, do not perform anything. What is the reason for this? Swamiji said, weak body. Weak body is the bane of our nation. So first we have to strengthen the body. It is in this context he said that, put aside Gita and play football. You should not take those words at the face value. Anyhow, so this deficiency is there in us. We study scripture, speak of big things and given an opportunity I will give a very good lecture. 
and you will all clap and I am happy. That's it. Beyond that, we don't take up practice. Ramakrishna mission motivates in this area which no other institution can continually do. Other institutions also do. We should not say that they don't do. There are very good noble institutions who are performing praiseworthy job in this field. But this holy monastic order run by the all renunciate monks always concentrates on this point put to practice what you study. So this is a unique contribution. Now you may ask where is that contribution? Where can I see this? Of course our Ramakrishna Mission Vidyapit Devghar is a shining example. We see students so disciplinedly sitting here. They all sung the Sanskrit song Kalidaso Jane Jane in unison. It was so nice. And we saw they have a very good routine, a very good schedule prepared by our all dedicated monks. So this is one of the instances. But we will be interested to know when did this training began? We should say this began with Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna himself. How? There were exceptional erudite scholars, formidable pandits. When they came in contact with Sri Ramakrishna, they realized that they had been studying all along only dry words, but here is a man who lives them. They drew inspiration and energy from, Bhag from Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna and we have the illustrious example of Narayana Shastri, a very great scholar who gave up everything and went for austerities, performed tapasya. This scholar, it is said, it is believed, was from somewhere in or near Raja, Rajaputana. He had mastered five systems of philosophies. Our students might be knowing there are six systems, is it not? The theistic philosophies, Shad Darshana, they are six. What are they? Sankhya, Yoga, Vaisheshika, Nyaya, Purva and Uttara Mimamsa. These are the six systems of, theistic systems of philosophy. Among these, this great Pandit Narayana Shastri, he had mastered five. Only Nyaya was remaining. He came to Bengal, which is the seat of Nyaya learning, which was. He came and he wanted to master this and inside, inside means within his mind, at the depth, in the depths of his mind, he had a very strong desire that he should be respected by all the great scholars. And he should be awarded the title Mahamahopadhyaya. We read in the life of Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna that it was so. He came to Bengal, learned Nyaya and become, became an expert in that. But by this time, he had come in contact with Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna and he saw that here is a sage, a man who lives what I have studied. Earlier he had in mind, I shall charm people with my erudition. I shall achieve the greatest name and fame and position and by becoming Mahamahopadhyaya. It is said the king of Jaipur had offered him a very great position and large salary. He refused that only for learning Shastras. Such a Pandit, after having learnt all this, he understood for himself that I have not at all achieved anything in essence. What we study in Viveka Chudamani, Vagvaikari Shabdajari Shastra Vyakhyana Kaushalam Vaidushyam Vidushantad Bhuktaye Natu Muktaye 
whatever I have studied will not help me in mukti. It is only a means to the bhukti, bhoga. He understood this and he thought within himself, I don't know when I will die because he had spent decades in learning the scriptures. Now he is in the middle age. He thinks, I don't know when the body will fall. Before that I should achieve something which is substantial and which is to be achieved by men. This also he had studied in Upanishads but that never struck him. That did not occur to him that he should devote his entire life for acquiring something which is beyond the human understanding. Shastras say, Ihache davedi datha satya masti if you realize God here, then you have done what should be done. Nache diha vedin mahati vinashtihi. And if you don't do so, you lose immensely. Ihache dashakat buddhum prakshari rasya. Like this, the Upanishads have said, and Narayan Shastri had studied, but it never struck him. After seeing Ramakrishna, he, this message came up in his mind, and he resolved that. No more of these things. I want to sit down for sadhana. And he went for tapasya and had a good end. He passed away in austerities. That's what we learn from the life of Ramakrishna. This motivation towards acquiring the experiential knowledge, this cannot come from books. And that is the unique contribution of Ramakrishna mission to Sanskrit education. I, with one point I will end this I have already gone beyond my time harmony in various spheres of life is a unique contribution of Ramakrishna mission and especially in Sanskrit because uh, out of fun maybe it is said one scholar will growl seeing the other Panditav Panditam Drishtva Shwana iva gurgurayate. Such a despicable, he says, even like the dogs on the street bark at each other, pandits bark on each other. That is what it says. Such is the scenario in Sanskrit, you should know. Though there were stalwarts, very huge stature pandits, but for nearly a millennia, down the centuries, we were in slavery and pandits were engaged in Shata Bhushani, Shata Dushani and so many things. That will not help. Ramakrishna came and pulled the sons of pandits out of this mire of ignorance. That is a unique contribution. If we speak of harmony, of course, religious harmony we have we discuss in several platforms, so I need not repeat that. Let us see in the personal life by body and mind. Let us take at the personal level what is the harmony we should achieve. First one, bodily strength and the strength of the intellect, the mind, both are necessary. Pandits will read, teach and write good books on health. For example, Raghuvam, uh, Kumara Sambhavam, Kumara Sambhavam, one of the classics written by Kalidasa. Our students might have heard of this quote. Sharira madhyam khalu dharma sadhanam. Everyone knows this. Pandits will discuss on that. They can write a paper on that. But did they achieve? Very few of them might have, we don't know. It does not mean that scriptures don't mention this. Profuse quotations you can get regarding this. In Raghuvamsham itself, in the first sarga, there it is said, Dilipa, Dilipa's personality is uh, spoken of in very high terms. It appears as if he is an ideal person. There it is said, Shastreshu akunthita buddhihi maurvi dhanushi chatata. What does it mean? Shastreshu akunthita buddhihi. His intellect was 
unimpeded. Impediment means an obstacle. When Dilipa sits down at st in studying a scripture, for studying a scripture, nothing can stop him. He can understand everything there. Such was his sharpness of the intellect. At the same time, his body was robust. That means here Kalidasa says, Maurvi Dhanushi Chatata. He was always ready for waging a war. Such was his physical capacity, his physic, as well as the intellectual soundness. These things are there in scriptures. Who applied it in life? Ramakrishna mission showed. You see, our small boys, they perform drill. They are given physical education. They sit down in the prayer hall for prayer. They study. A very good study room is there for them. This one, putting the things into practice, achieving a harmony at the personal level, the ambience is given by Ramakrishna mission. That is the unique contribution to the Sanskrit education. If we mention like that, there are so many instances where we can discuss harmony. This is one of the unique contributions of Sri Ramakrishna mission. And like this, we may, when we contemplate, so many new ideas come to mind where we can recognize the contributions made by Ramakrishna mission to this Sanskrit education. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Shri Ramakrishna Arpanamastu